Can you guess a movie's plot by just looking at the movie poster? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Movies, you've seen them, yeah. but have you seen movie posters? Wow, there was a tornado involved. Yeah, and you have seen movie posters, I've right? I've seen lots of them. So I, I probably I mal-used the tornado. Yeah. Because I built Unless up something. you're talking about Twister, which is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> it was a good movie back in the day. Here's the thing about movie posters. A lot of them um, are not good anymore, first of all. Hmm. But even if they are good, a lot of them have nothing, they don't really indicate a lot about right. the movie. Or do uh, they? Or do they? That's so, what we're gonna do today. We're we've playing invented a game, a game. Where we look at a movie poster, I'll present one to Link, Link will present one to me. We guess the movie plot by only using the poster and then we hear the real plot and see how right we were. Yeah. And I think you've got one for me first, right? Yeah, so uh, let's play. You can play along at home too. Uh, I'm gonna pull oh, in my- They can? I'm you have permission. All you've right. been given permission. Take a look at this movie poster, Rhett. Oh. This is from 1989. What do you see there? I see Phantom of the Mall, mm -hmm. Eric's Revenge. Yeah. Is that Eric? That's a, well, first of all. Well, I can't say. First, I'm I mean, not telling you anything, his, except it was directed by Richard Friedman. I believe that that's supposed to look like a scar, but it looks, I think there's a lot, some spray paint involved on the face. Um, he's at a three-story mall, which points for that, Eric. <laughs> there was a nightmare at the mall. Eric the Phantom struck. Okay, that's a hint right there. First of all, either there's a perspective thing going on or this guy is huge. So uh, that's a hint, take it or leave well, it. Well, I think he's just, I think he's just superimposed, Link. And I don't think that's spray paint, I think that's probably a shadow. But uh, again, that may be another hint. Okay, uh, I think I know what happened here. I think he went to Brookstone, uh, as a lot of people like to do at the mall. <laughs> he put his face in some contraption. <laughs> because like there's, a griddle? Al there's always something to test out, okay. but he did it without asking the permission or the help of the employee at Brookstone, mm -hmm. and it ruined his face. And now he's going back to sue the guy at Brookstone, I guess, that's what the plot is. Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge Against Brookstone was the original <laughs> title. All right, you wanna hear the correct answer? Mm-hmm. Eric was just a regular guy with a big house, but when some greedy people decided they wanted to build a mall over it, they burned Eric's house down, with him still in it. Now, Eric lurks in the fence of the mall, wreaking havoc on those who wronged him. Lurks in the fence? What? He lurks in the fence? He lurks. At he lurks mall? in the vents. Oh, at the, the mall. vents. That's the. That's I didn't a, know how he got inside a fence. That's John Bailey, honest trailer's voice, oh, right there. Call, called in a little favor. Thank you, John. For we couldn't sound that epic, so thank you for doing that's that. That's amazing. For us. Yeah. Um. So you didn't get any of that right. Well, you got Eric. I got, you got Eric Phantom. Right. You got Eric right. So uh, and mall. Of course, that was all pretty obvious. All right, give me one. Nothing about Brookstone, though. Nothing about Brookstone was in there. Okay, Link. Here's yours. Mama's foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mama stepped in something, didn't she? <laughs> now the fun really kicks in. Okay, I get it. Uh -huh. um, you know, this is kind of a <coughs> classic movie poster. Like, uh, this is like a parody of uh, Big Mama's House with Martin Lawrence. It looks like the same kind of thing, except the foot's really big. And, and Parody, huh? And Martin Lawrence is not playing the mama here. Hmm. But there's a man with a microphone, he is a rapper, and his mom stepped in some something, but then his manager with the white tank top the is, money a, man. is a peace-loving money man who's seeking to make money off the venture, and he actually, uh, brush that stuff on mama's foot in order to make money on the, like the talk show circuit. All right, Link, here's the real plot. When mama's diseased foot is threatened by amputation, it is up to her twin sons from South Central to raise the money to save her foot. They must host a chili cook-off and rap battle their way to earning $1,000 before mama's foot becomes mama's stump. <laughs> Ooh. So you were right about mama's foot. I was right about rap being diseased. I was right about money. You said she stepped in something, though. It's just a, like a gangrene thing. Ew. And uh, he is a rapper. It's a rap battle. But the chili cook-off, you would have known that. There's he, no chili in there. There's, there's a dog. There's a girl in the back with booty shorts. Why is she no so chili. happy if her foot's about to be amputated? Because they are great rappers. 
and they're gonna save it. All right, what you got for me? All right, check a look at this one. <clears throat> check a look. <laughs> oh, look wow. at that, what do you see, Rhett? Is that Colin Farrell? I can't say for sure. That is Colin Farrell. I've never heard, The Lobster? This, I will say, this is a movie from this year, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. Well, I mean, I guess he's hugging an invisible lobster. Man, man one man's love affair with the world's largest invisible lobster. <laughs> That's not my guess. <laughs> That's not your guess? No, because as I look closer, I can see hair up there. That's not a lobster. That's a woman. You know what? That's two women. That's a woman over each shoulder. One main lobster fisherman's love affair with two lobster-loving ladies. <laughs> the lobster. Who are invisible or no? Not, no, not invisible. Okay, let's find out. But they feel out. invisible around him. Let's find out. In a dystopian future, single people are taken to the hotel where they're forced to find romantic partners in 45 days or be transformed into beasts and sent off into the woods. <laughs> I mean, this was a tough one, right? Not like to go Transformed into on. lobsters? Or just beasts? Well, lobsters don't live in the woods. They live in the sea. I haven't seen the movie. and uh, But there is a love affair. I got that part right. Is it two, two women? Is there one? No, one? it's 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 just romantic partners. You got to hook up in forty-five days, or they become beasts in the dystopian future. Wow. So I'm not you were pretty much to that. you nailed it, man. Yeah, I was yeah <laughs> all over it. <laughs> all right, give me one. All right, here's your next one, Link. Oh, Daniel, this this one has a high production value. Yeah, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just by looking at the at the DVD cover. This is not even a movie poster. This is a DVD cover. This is Daniel Der Zauberer. Uh, played by Daniel Kublock, von Milen non giblet, yeah. von Villen he's a, he's a giblet, yes, he's definitely a giblet, you can tell. Okay. Don't um, miss the lady in the back, Link. Oh, that is his father. That is not oh. a, And really? his father is also a magician. Okay. Uh, I, I got this one. All right. An ESL magician will stop at nothing to put the fire out on his fingertip. Mm. But his father's not happy about it. No. <laughs> That's my, I mean, what else could it be, right? Good, good guess, Link. All right, let's hear the real plot. German idol runner-up Daniel Kubelbach has many fans and more than a few enemies. When two evil assassins hunt him down, Daniel will stop at nothing to save himself the only way he knows how, by writing a new hit song. He's not a magician. He just wears a hat and he's, a bow tie and has a magic finger. He's the German idol, but he, run her up. But it did run her up, buddy. <laughs> but listen to this. He did say, "Well, Daniel will stop at nothing," and I said, "Daniel will stop yeah, yeah, at yeah. nothing." Yeah. Kudos to you, Link, for getting one phrase right. <laughs> that John just added didn't have anything to do with the plot. Okay, so I uh, I did all right. You did. You did good. You did good. Thank you're, you. You're very good at this, Link. All let right, me, let me you give got? you another one. Bam. Hmm. Redneck Miller. He's a good old boy, but with a mean streak as wide as the Catawba. The Catawba! Yeah. That's a North Carolina river. Yeah, it is. Familiar with that? Rated R. Lake Norman. Lots of stuff to take in here, so just kind of verbally yeah, process. Yeah, there's a lot of ladies. A lot of ladies, but not a lot of clothes. What else? Burning car, purple pants, gun. Hmm. Got One guy looks like a pimp. You Oh. Oh, this is a, oh, he's a skinny dipping pimp. What? He is in charge of a group of skinny dipping ladies. And another skinny dipping pip, pimp <laughs> has come on the scene and wants to take some of his ladies away. And he's like, uh-uh, you ain't gonna mess with this redneck skinny dipping ladies. That's the plot. <laughs> what I just said, basically. His name's Miller. He's okay. a redneck. And, but you didn't mention Elvis down in the lower right. Let's hear the correct answer. Redneck Miller is a hard living country music playing disc jockey. When his motorcycle is stolen and used in a drug deal, he stops at nothing to get it back from the hapless thugs who stole it. <laughs> He's just a disc jockey looking for his motorcycle. There's no skinny dipping? 
I, well, I'm sure there is, but uh, it's not central to the plot. It's central to the poster. <laughs> There's five. literally she's that one's in the middle. Funny thing is, the movie's about a motorcycle, yet there's a burning car yeah. in the poster. Well, that's why I had to get a motorcycle because the car burned up. Right. I mean, that's a lot to take in in one poster, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rated R. Here's another one for you. Seizure. Okay, this is hard to read. Oh, it it kind of looks like you're having a seizure. It it could the new movie poster may induce a seizure. Their only purpose is the breath stopping panic of seizure. Okay, okay, so we've got a little person, a luscious woman, and a luchador with mm. an ax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay. that's um, true. all right, I think, I think there's a little misdirection in this poster. It's not about like having a seizure. I think this is about seizing property. Um, and they are a trio of repo men who when you don't make your payments on your knife, your candlestick, or your ax, they come looking for you, and that guy at the top is uh, is their boss. He's, the man in the square is the boss? Yeah, he's yelling a lot. He's like, get to work, guys. Does he have a square head, or is he go, just in a square? Go see some, go see some property. Link, I'm just gonna go and on And that little here. person is from Fantasy Island. That's I, true, that is tattoo. You're right about that, but you're wrong about everything else. Let's hear the real plot. <laughs> okay. Author Edmund Blackstone suffers from a recurring nightmare where three evil people terrorize him and his family. When the dream becomes a reality, Edmund must fight for his life against the Queen of Evil, a giant scar-faced man, and a dwarf named Spider. A dwarf named Spider. That's tattoos playing Spider this and a, time. And a giant scar-faced man. Yeah. You and know a who luscious lady. You know who directed this? Kubrick. Oliver Stone. This is his first you, film, and I'm are you not kidding me? joking. And he's try, been trying to hide from it all these years, but we're letting the cat out of the bag. We're letting the seizure out of the bag, Oliver Stone. <laughs> we know this was your first film, and we think it's great. I had a lot of we fun with this We think the movie game. poster's great. Thanks we're, for, gonna, we're gonna watch it. Oh, we're gonna watch it. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing this video. You know what time it is. Hey, I'm Christina Fay from Phoenix, Arizona, and it is time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Thanks to John Bailey from Honest Trailers for providing our epic movie voice. Go to ScreenJunkies.com for more awesome movie-related content. And click through to Gummit Gamora where our friend Andy Signar, the creator of Honest Trailers and host of Movie Fights, joins us for more movie poster madness. Currency is burps. Hey. Oh, you're in the market for this uh, mug here? I like it. I like to get a double. Huh? I like to match up what yeah, I got yeah. here. Here, pay up, man. <laughs> How many is it? Because that was one. Uh, well, it's three. How many? <clears throat> <laughs> it sounds fake. Do it again. <clears throat> oh, that sounded there real. There we go. Now I got All this right. cup. What do you want? A tip. <clears throat> <laughs> story. The word was story, <laughs> not sexy. Maybe one day this sexy will be true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's what it said. <laughs>